And I've been teaching there for maybe 15 years until last year. Last year, I, I, I quit uh, my job. And now I'm, I'm working full time on the internet. I have a podcast, um, oh, a great. YouTube nice. channel. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So it, it has been a, <laughs> a long trip. Yeah. I knew that I didn't want to do the, the traditional grammar podcast, explaining grammar point or vocabulary. No, I thought that the podcast could have a lot of potential and I could be used in many different ways. So my self-esteem, my self-esteem is, is very high now compared to before. Because in, in, when I was teaching Spanish, you know, nobody said to me all the time, you know, oh, I love your teaching. No, sometimes, <laughs> some students, you know, congratulate you. Ah, thank you. You know, but this is not that common. And here uh, online, everybody is, is telling me, oh, you are a fantastic teacher. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. This is Daniel Goodson. You are listening to My Fluent Podcast. On this podcast, we try to, to figure out ways on how to become fluent in any language. And the interview series on how to become fluent by interviewing others goes on. I had the pleasure to interview Juan from Spain. He is the host of the wonderful podcast called Español con Juan. And he has a website called 1001 Reasons to Learn Spanish as well. And I wanted to know from him how his journey began. I mean, before he began with his podcast. And who is the person behind the podcast? Who is Juan as a person? How is it going with his English? And so on. Without any further ado... Let's dive into today's interview. Hello, Juan. Oh, hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you very much. It's so <laughs> nice having you here on my Fluent Podcast. El Thank you. Profesor más guapo del mundo aquí en my Fluent Podcast. It's, <laughs> exactly, an, exactly. it's an honor. It's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for your invitation. Okay, yeah, well, my name is uh, Juan. I'm a Spanish. I am from a small city in the south of Spain called Granada. I started to, to learn English when I was about 19 or 20, more or less, or so very late. Uh, when I was about 29 or something like that, I decided to come to England, to London, to, to, to improve my English because, uh, as in your situation, uh, I, I didn't have anybody to talk to. I just was reading and watching movies. And so I decided one summer, I decided, okay, I'm going, I'm going to, to UK, to London for three months. I, I, I was sure that in three months, my English would be very, very good. I would become fluent, bilingual and everything. I, I had a lot, <laughs> many, many high expectatives. And then I came here and after three months, I realized that it wasn't enough. So I decided to stay for another three months. <laughs> And then another three months, uh, <laughs> like that, you know, because I, I, I was never happy with my English. So actually, I, I, I found here a friend, I made friend, I found a job. Uh, so I, I stay here and I've been here for 23 years now. My English is still not good enough, but <laughs> so I have, you, I have to you stay were, here. Uh, uh, professor at the university is that right I, when, when I, I, I studied i studied psychology uh, in spain when i came here i wanted to work as a psychologist maybe but my english wasn't good enough to do that uh, so i decided to become a language teacher i could teach uh, i decided i could teach uh, french and spanish in the schools and then I, I did different things always related to to languages until I found a, a job at the university, uh, University College London, which is a very good place, very prestigious university. And I've been teaching there for maybe 15 years, until last year. Last year, I, I, I quit uh, my job, and, and now I'm, I'm working full-time on the internet. I have a podcast, um, oh, a great. YouTube nice. channel. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. So it, it has been a, <laughs> a long trip. Yeah. So when did you start exactly with your podcast? I think I started uh, like uh, seriously in the, in two thousand and seventeen. 
I have been doing other things before similar, but it wasn't really a podcast because, I mean, I'm not very young now, so <laughs> I didn't know how podcasts or YouTube uh, work. I have I, I have to learn how to use them. I have to learn how you know how to how to use them for languages to teach languages. So at the beginning, I was doing like it wasn't a podcast. It was like audio activities. You know, I was working at the university, so I did, I wanted to create um, listening practice for my students so I created some short dialogues or I interview some of my colleagues at the university in, in Spanish and I, I was creating like see, listening activities for my students basically for a couple of years and then in 2017 I, I did a little bit of research and I discovered that I could do other things so I, 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 I started with the podcast yes three years ago yeah So was, was there anybody or anything that inspired you to do the podcast? Or was there any idols or do you like listening to, to other podcasts maybe? Yeah, well, I remember I was, I was listening to this podcast, maybe, you know, uh, Coffee Break, Coffee yeah. Break English, Coffee Break Spanish, Coffee Break French. They have different languages. You know it? Yes, I know. I know it. I have listened to it, but... It has been quite a while. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I don't listen to it anymore, but I remember that I, I, I like the, you know, the, the voice of the, of the guy who was doing it. And it was, I, I like the atmosphere, you know, the, they, they create yeah. in the podcast. And I thought I could do something similar. I, did, I didn't like the fact that it was everything in English. Because, um, for example, if, 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 when they are teaching French or German, They speak in English most of the time, so yeah. Because uh, I really like that, but on the other hand, I like the atmosphere. The guy is, is very, he come across as very nice, you know. Yeah. It was very cozy. Uh, I, I was trying to learn German uh, for a while. I was I was listening to them as, until I realized that most of the time was they were talking in English, and I yeah. like that. I, I, and, I understand why they do it. I understand why they do it, but no, it's it, It didn't uh, work for me. And speaking about atmosphere, I must say, when I came across your podcast for the very first time, I was so impressed because, yeah, I remember, I think you were washing your, <laughs> you, you were doing the, the washing it? machine, I think. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, you, you were doing small tasks, daily tasks. And to me, it was like a friend was talking to me and talking about life and that was so amazing because it was absolutely not the typical language podcast you know without a lot of grammar what, no it was like like a, a conversation not a conversation but like a friend talking to me and that's the reason why i i really i, I love your podcast the way you communicate and also your emotions when, when you are speaking sometimes very loud or so it's just amazing because i can feel the energy i can feel the passion behind all this and yeah <laughs> thank you uh, yeah yeah i understand many people many people tell me something similar it's actually what i've been trying to do because when i started i didn't know exactly what to do but i knew that i didn't want to do the the traditional grammar podcast explaining grammar point or vocabulary no i thought that podcast could have a lot of potential and it could be used in many different ways but i i don't know i don't i'm not a specialist but um Little by little, I've been discovering different things that you can use, like storytelling, tell stories, or I don't know, different things that you, you can use with the podcast. And later, in, in the last year, I've been doing this kind of thing. Yeah, just walking down the street, for example, um, commenting something that I see or something that happened to me, or maybe in, in the, like, you, like you, the one you mentioned in my house, just washing the dishes, or, you know... Um, Uh, putting my clothes on uh, and at the same time talking yeah the idea is like talking to somebody as if you were here with me yeah something very natural very spontaneous 
and uh, that's what I've been doing lately. I don't know if that works. <laughs> I guess I so. so. It it works quite well. <laughs> it yeah, it's great. And I'm wondering if if these um, episodes are always spontaneous or or do you also have like a, a script or some points you want to talk about? Um, how do you go about or how do you um, get the topic in general? Yeah, um, it's a mix of situations. Sometimes it's, it's very spontaneous, very, very natural. Well, I have in mind before something I, I want to say, I want to talk about something, yeah, like a, a general topic. But in the middle of... Um, another task, you know, maybe I'm doing the, the dishes or, you know, I, I'm, I'm walking down the street and I, I'm making some comment in a very natural way. At the same time, I talk about something that is worrying me uh, in that day or something that I have in mind. The result is very, very natural. Yeah. And, and but other time, well, I have um, a script, I, I write it. Because it depends. Sometimes I want to make sure that I, I mention a few things. You know, I want to use a, a particular vocabulary. It, yeah. And and you provide the transcription as well for the listeners, which is a great way yeah. to learn. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it's very time consuming <laughs> <laughs> because when you are talking, you know, like that, off your mind, anything that come up um, yeah. to your mind. So you you, and trans then you, have to you transcribe for yourself the whole thing. Is it you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I or I use a software that makes most of it automatically, but there are a lot of mistakes. I, I have to go through it to correct, you know, to polish it up a little bit to correct mistakes. And yeah, that that's the most boring part to do. <laughs> to, to, okay, to create the <laughs> to write the transcription. So, <laughs> has podcasting changed your life? Um, somehow, yes. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, when I was teaching at university, you know, I had to use the methodology and, you know, the kind of yeah. um, teaching that they asked me to do. I was one Spanish teacher, like the, the rest. But here, with the podcast, I do what I want. I, I discover what it works, what it doesn't work, what people like, what I can do best for me. So that's very important because you know yourself a little bit. People tell me, for example, ah, you, well, I like what you do. It's very natural. It's, you have a lot of sense of humor. And mm -hmm. I like your approach. As, uh, so my self-esteem, my self-esteem <laughs> is, is very high now compared to before. Because in, in, when I was teaching Spanish, you know, nobody said to me all the time, you know, oh, I love your teaching. No, sometimes, <laughs> some student, you know, congratulate you. Ah, thank you. You know, but this is not that common. And here uh, online, everybody is, is telling me, oh, you are a fantastic <laughs> teacher. I know I'm not a fantastic yeah. teacher, but <laughs> people keep telling me that. So eventually it becomes something that you, you get used to. It. Uh, my brain, I don't know. Uh, like this kind of thing so <laughs> so what do you like more being a professor or being a podcaster uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't see myself uh, anything like that as, or professor or podcaster no I am Juan you know I, I do different things <laughs> and at the moment I'm doing the podcast and I, when you do, I, I suppose for you it's the same. You discover yourself. You know, you you you, yeah, you exactly. discover things that you you were not uh, aware that you could do now. So, uh, for example, I, I discovered that I I can make jokes and people laugh at my jokes and I can integrate humor in my in my videos and my podcast. I didn't know that <laughs> before, and I, uh, so uh, you know. Uh, I, 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 you you are telling me that you like this kind of uh, natural podcast when I. You know, I, I, do, I do the washing machine. Um, I didn't know that before. So it's, it's, it's something, I, it, it, does, it, it, it feels good. It feels good, you know? Right now, episode comes to mind, which you did. Um, it was called something like Vergüenza. And you were talking mm -hmm. about yourself and you consider yourself as a rather shy person. I think you mentioned also that you didn't like to to speak in public. I think at any rate, yeah. it was yeah, it was great because 
not only in that episode, but in general, you talk very openly, I think. So we can have like an insight of your life or your person. And I think that's, mm. that's also the reason why your po podcast is so great. And yeah, it makes you mm. human, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. It, it's like yeah. you said before, yeah. it, you, are, you are Juan, you are not a podcaster, you are Juan. That's me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry, guys, for this very short interruption, but I really, I need to show you which episode I meant. The name is Que Corte, Que Vergüenza, which means something like, what a cut, how embarrassing. I will only play a minute or so and give English translations. Me gustaba ir a clase de inglés, pero, pero una cosa que que, bueno, que no sé, que ahora recuerdo que no me gustaba era hablar, hablar delante de, de la gente en inglés. Eh, me daba vergüenza. And I liked going to English classes, but, but one thing that I don't know, that I now remember, that I didn't like was talking, talking in front of people in English. I was kind of embarrassed. Y, <laughs> y recuerdo que el día antes de ir a clase pensaba, hoy, oh, hoy, oh, hoy, oh, ahora tengo que ir a clase de inglés mañana. Esa noche estaba mal, estaba nervioso. Estaba nervioso porque tenía que hablar en clase en público. No, y no solo, no solo porque era en inglés, que claro, a mí, cuando no estás acostumbrado a hablar en otro idioma y te escuchas hablar en otro idioma las primeras veces, es, es un poco ridículo, ¿no? Es un poco... <ríe> Yo recuerdo que me sentía ridículo. How are you? <ríe> <laughs> a mí me parecía ridículo, ¿no? No sé. And I remember the day before I went to class, I thought, oh, now I have to go to English class tomorrow. That night I was bad. I was nervous. I was nervous because I had to speak in class, in public, and not just because it was in English, which of course to me, when you're not used to speaking in another language and you hear yourself speaking in another language, the first few times it's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? I remember I felt ridiculous. How are you? I thought it was ridiculous. I don't know. So, guys, this was just to give you a general idea how an episode could could sound like. But I recommend you to, to go to his podcast and have a listen. Because this is out of context and, for example, I didn't integrate the part where he said that he loved and, and he loves uh, English classes. So now let's continue with the interview. It's like yeah. you said before, yeah. it, you, are, you are Juan, you are not a podcaster, you are Juan. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're right. When, when I was starting, for example, with the videos on YouTube, like six or seven years ago, I didn't like to, to have my picture taken. You know, I, I didn't want to, to create videos or to make videos on YouTube when it's like that. I was very, very embarrassed about uh, all that. And my first video was very difficult. It was, you know, I was sweating and I, I, <laughs> it, it was very, you know, I, I didn't like it at all. But then the reaction from people was so great. Okay, well, if they like it, why not, you know? And then uh, now it's, it's something natural, but... Um, yeah, and in one of your last episodes, you mentioned that it's time for a change as well. And I think that you are thinking of, of doing new stuff or proceeding new, yeah. new things, I guess. So maybe you could talk about that. What ideas do you have in mind for your future? I don't know. I, I, have, I have been doing the same kind of material for three years, so... I think sometimes you have to change, you know. I, I want to keep working online. I want to keep the channel and the podcast, but I want to change a little bit the format because I think is you have to change. In Spanish, we have a saying which goes if, if something like, if you don't change, uh, you have two possibilities, or change or die. <laughs> because you, or you change or you die. And I think it's true. You have to, you know, you create something that is working for a while, but then you, you cannot do the same thing for, forever. Yeah, I want, I want to make some changes. The problem is that I don't, I'm not sure exactly what to do next. Uh, I, maybe I was thinking to, to use the podcast to talk about culture, about, you know, the, the Spanish culture, maybe the yeah. history or something about, you know, films or... Uh, something that, that students 
of the Spanish may be interested in. The problem with that is that that is very time consuming because I will need to, you know, to research the topic. Yeah, so I'm, I, I don't see. know. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe one possibility is to to make only one episode for YouTube and at the same time the same material using it as a podcast. Now I'm I'm going to quickly show you uh, a picture. It's an ad which I receive every day when I am on Facebook. It's because I have switched the language to to English. So maybe mm. maybe Italki thinks that that I want to learn German, but as a matter of fact I I am a Swiss German, so I I can speak German. But it says here speak German fluently in a month. And then it goes on, 90 hours equals one semester. And I was wondering, what do you think about such a picture? What comes to mind to you? Oh, I think I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really like this kind of things. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that I thought he was doing this kind of publicity because I, I collaborated with them for a while. But they, I didn't know that they were doing this kind of things because I don't, when you know when teachers or companies make this kind of promises it's very silly because you cannot get fluent in, in any language <laughs> uh, just with in one month no yeah, what, do, what do you think yeah <laughs> I, I agree I totally agree with you but the ad is very catchy I don't know why I, why, I don't know why they are doing this because they didn't used to do this kind of things um, Yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure why, because I think that a lot of people know about Italki and they are very popular. No, but I think I mean Italki is a is a company where you can find online teachers. There is nothing yeah. wrong with this. Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a good. Yeah, but, I had uh, I had lessons. Yeah, I mean, there and yeah. and it was great. Yeah. Yes, it's a, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's like it's like a Uber for language teachers more or less all the companies promise three months um, get fluent in three months and now they are promising one month only <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no i think if you know if you if you if you are interested in languages you know that that's it's impossible you cannot uh, yeah you can you cannot learn a, a language in one month three months or even three years <laughs> okay Great. That, like, you know, a hero or anything like that. No. Yeah. <laughs> so then I want to thank you very much that you took the time for me and my Fluent podcast. It's, it's really a great podcast. I hope that you will be doing this for forever. Yeah. <laughs> forever. <Okay. laughs> Because it's, it's a great way to learn Spanish. And that way I can brush up my Spanish as well. Okay. Thank you very well, much. Daniel, Yes. Can, can, I, can I ask you a short question, Daniel? Yes, of course. Go on. In your podcast, uh, so you you interview English learner to, to talk about uh, the the experience with with language yes. with learning English. Mostly yes, but not not only mm. English because my podcast is about becoming fluent in any language. But mm. yes, because I am in touch with different people and they talk with me in English. But I I also had other podcasters from English podcasts. For example, Luke's English podcast. Maybe you, you know. You know. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, now that you mentioned it, yeah, that's one of my... No, it's not a hero, but, it, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I watch it. I, I listen to it uh, sometime. I think I, I, I try to learn a few things from him. Yeah, yeah it's, it's me one too. Of my model. And there is, for example, Chris Broholm. Yeah, I haven't listened to it for a while, but I, I used to listen to, it, to him yeah, a few years ago. Yeah. So he's, he's from, from Denmark or yes, Sweden? Yes, Denmark. Yeah. Denmark, okay. And so I sometimes, I, I have different topics, you know. I have also ideas how I can improve my English. So mm -hmm. let's say this interview is also a way for me to improve. So mm -hmm. in one episode, I talked about how to become a better English speaker by interviewing other people. Or for example, I had the idea how to learn with music and then I talk about it. Or how to learn English by reading out loud and making audio audiobook. Yes, because you know that there is mm -hmm. a website called LibriVox. And over there, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are reading out loud a book. And so there that's are a, that's, that's volunteering. 
and I did uh, okay. that, and then I explained in one of my episodes how how it it went and how I could improve. So there are a lot of different topics. It's not one thing. It's it's really yeah, yeah. like a language uh, journey. You know, it, it, it's a language journey. Yes. No, it's very, very interesting, very interesting, Daniel. Because uh, actually, I was thinking to do something similar myself. <laughs> I don't, I don't have time. I never have time. But I thought maybe I could do like a podcast or a, another YouTube channel in English, mainly for myself, mainly to to talk about language learning in English because I don't have the possibility to to speak in English that much. So I thought maybe if I do a channel in English just to talk about basically what you are doing. Yeah. Uh, so I think. <laughs> Because you are right, I think one of the best ways to practice a language is using the language. Exactly. Using, using exactly. the language with, with, a, with a real purpose. So I think what you're doing is great because uh, you are using English to talk about languages. Uh, you are creating a podcast, interviewing people. So you are using the language uh, for a, something, you know, yeah, exactly. with an objective. And it, it's, just, it's fantastic. It's great. Great. And on my very first episode, I had to jot down everything. I had to write down everything because I couldn't make a sentence on my own. I couldn't uh -huh. speak freely. And by producing yeah. this podcast, I got better and better. So, yeah, I could improve no, very drastically very my, my English and also become more confident. Because, yeah, usually I am very shy, but... I, I think I, I've lost a lot of my shyness because I had to contact people as well. And you get better yeah. by by overcoming your fears. <laughs> I, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's it. You, you you learn you learn things by by doing. Uh, you learn to speak a language by speaking the language, basically. So exactly, it's, it's very good. I, I, if I if I if I have time, I I will, I will do something similar. I I will I will become a, a competitor. Of your punk or your podcast. Yeah, go on. I would be honored <laughs> to have a competitor no, like I am, you. I am, very, I, am, I am very interested in everything about languages, about uh, how to learn a language, uh, all the different methodologies. I, I like to talk about this kind of thing uh, a lot. So I was thinking maybe I, I, if I, can, I can think about all these things aloud, you know, and at the same time it, it make a podcast or something like that. So Yeah, one, one thing is for sure. You would have one fan already. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Thank you. I, I send you, if I start, I, I send you the, the link. To the yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much, okay, Juan. <laughs> bye. Bye. See you. Bye. I will try to wrap this episode up very quickly for you. So first and foremost, thank you Juan very much for this interview. It was really great. It was a pleasure and I could learn a lot from you. Thank you so much. And as well, I hope that we could inspire other learners to do a podcast, for example, as well, to start out their own podcast. So, all right, just one quick note here. I really liked the moment in which Juan switched the interview. I mean, he asked a question to me and that way I could improvise. Well, improvise, I could just talk about something that I know and that gave me kind of an exercise as well. So probably I will talk a bit more about this interview on my next episode. You were listening to My Flume Podcast and I'm Daniel Goodson. And if you are a Spanish learner, I totally recommend that you go to 1001reasonstolearnspanish.com. Over there you will find the link to his great podcast, Español con Juan. Thanks for tuning in. Bye! Pues, pues sí, pero no te preocupes, no te preocupes, porque lo que tú necesitas hacer ahora es, claro, escuchar y leer español, ¿vale? Olvídate un poco de la gramática, olvídate un poco, olvídate un poco, porque os veo, cuando veo vuestros comentarios en Facebook o en YouTube... 
algunos estáis obsesionados con la lógica. Os veo que hacéis filosofáis, filosofáis, hacéis filosofía, hacéis filosofía, pensáis por qué se usa el subjuntivo, porque la persona eh, no está segura. No, no you are listening to Upbeat Party from Scott Holmes. Bueno, 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 todas esas interpretaciones. En fin, no sé. Yo creo que cuando se llega a un nivel así un poco intermedio, hay que olvidarse un poco de la gramática, de los ejercicios.